Hello everybody and welcome back to another DF Retro Play. This time it's something a little different. Sonic Robo Blast 2. Uh, a game that has been around for quite some time, actually. And we'll discuss all of that and more because I am still joined by Audi Surly, as always. You're surrounded by Audi still to this day. That's right. So, I think this is the first first time you've seen this? or Yeah, so you told me about this a few years ago, I think, after you watched uh, Sage, that Sonic uh, fan game convention or yeah, yeah, yeah. event. Exactly. And I've always been curious, but this is actually the first time I'm seeing it, and wow, just looking at these first moments here, I'm blown away already. Yeah, so I've, I've always wanted to talk about this, but it's been, this is a game that's actually been in development as a fan game since 1998 or so. 98? Yeah, so Sonic Robo Blast 1 is actually a 2D game released in the 90s as well. Very, very basic looking, but it's really interesting to see the roots and the sort of fan community going back that far. So the first game does not use this no. style at all. So this game, however, has been in development for all this time and has continued to evolve. The latest patch just came out this July, and man, I hadn't checked in for a while, and it's just amazing how far along this, this title has become. So when you rotate the camera now, I see that, of course, the characters are sprites, but they actually have sprites for all angles, which, wow. Super cool. So for those that aren't familiar with this then, it's based on a source port of the Doom engine known as Doom Legacy which allows it to offer uh, features that aren't possible normally within Doom, like all the bridges and some of these effects. Like, check out the water that they do. Wait, well, we'll see it more. So this is a Doom wad, you're saying? Not a Doom wad, but it's based on a Doom uh, source engine. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not... Oh, all right, I get it. Huh. So, the underlying tech is Doom adjacent, let's just say, which is really fascinating because that... you wouldn't think the Doom engine is a good fit for a Sonic game. Not at all. I mean, we've seen other... Oh yeah, check out this water here. Yeah, wow. We've seen some other retro conversions on Doom, though. There's like the Mega Man one. Yeah. There's the Castlevania one, so... Absolutely, it's it's nothing new per se, but although I guess at the time when this was being made, it was pretty In new. 98, yeah, wow. Um, But yeah, so why I like this so much comes down to the, type, the control that you have. And watch me fail some jumps here now that I've said... <laughs> Because, because that's actually part of its charm. Is it's actually it has some challenge to it. Well, uh, it looks like the challenge is very much based on just you know learning the controls, and then you'll perfectly f get it. You know what I mean? Like it's very classical game design. Yeah, exactly. So basically, and I'm actually playing with a gamepad here to make this session easier. So I'm using the simplified control, but it's actually a game that plays really well with a mouse and keyboard normally. But effectively, you move Sonic with the left stick or your keyboard and you control the camera with your mouse or the right stick and it's very fast and responsive and basically you know you point to where you want to go you push the stick in that direction and you go or you run into enemies uh, but it actually uses the two shoulder buttons for jump and roll huh and so you always have your hands on the double sticks interesting I love this water so it gives you a lot more control over the camera even then, huh? And that's what allows you to make, uh, to do these somewhat complicated moves, I guess. Well, already I'm seeing here though that like, I think when you say 3D Sonic, everyone thinks Sonic Adventure. That's right. Uh, and generally, I like those games just fine. I'm a big fan of uh, two in particular. But the stages in those games are kind of open, unnecessarily open, I feel, and it often forces you down uh, corridors to emphasize the speed angle. At well, least... it's funny you say open, because that's actually kind of... What you said, the second part, is what, what really is the problem, is it's very focused on funneling you, right? Yeah, as I said, unnecessary open, because in the end, you're just going down this linear path of a corridor to emphasize the speed. These levels seem to be very open and taking into account kind of a wide range of movement, so it's easier to control Sonic. And actually, so that's what's fascinating, is that controlling Sonic in a 3D space has been a problem that has remained for quite some time. Uh, Sonic Team mostly chose to focus on creating games focused more on, just like you said, it's that linear high-speed action. So there's a lot of fast. Yes, and a lot of scripted bits yeah. that keep you moving. Where this actually kind of 
functions more like the 2D games in a way. In the 3D space, that's very interesting. And I mean, the right way to go here is to have these large spaces so that you have enough space room to control to room and jump and maneuver Sonic with the speed. And this is hard to play, by the way, when you're trying to talk at the same time. And lean over the microphone. Yeah. But it's interesting here, too, because the Robotnik battles go way more back to the classic Robotnik battle. It's like oh, one camera. gimmick per... per uh, for a battle, I see. Exactly. So yeah, there we go. That's the first stage. Um, let's let's get into some of the other cool visual details going on here to really. Yeah, please show me. Yeah, this is so fascinating. So one thing I love is like the actual sprites themselves are gorgeous for yes. one, and you notice there's actually like slopes and changes in elevation in that way, and in addition to obviously the bridges and such. They use all these sprites, these pixel art sprites around, kind of like the actual games, including the rings. They have so many frames of animation. But they are sprites. They are sprites. And it just winds up looking really good. You often have kind of issues with this because uh, you're noted for not being a big fan of Super Mario Land 2 because the coin's not spinning. Oh yeah, the spinning <laughs> coins, that's right. So this is a big, big plus for you in this game, huh? Absolutely. So you got the enemies there. Also, enemy placement in this game. Uh, the enemies don't move too quickly, so I see... There's a slime that you can stand on. Oh, you can, so it's jelly, basically. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the enemies in Sonic Adventure, again, they move too much and are a bit too unpredictable for me. Whereas here, I can openly predict kind of the movement of these small robots by just looking at so, it. So, the thing, the difference, and I, I actually don't mind the Sonic Adventure style, the way those those enemies work is you're meant to use the lock-on feature where you just double tap jump, and here is actually trickier because everything is somewhat manual, like control the speed, the direction, everything. It's not, you're not usually just dropped in to sort of a scripted like sequence. You can't just double tap to attack your enemies. Right. It requires more execution from the player. Like, I just messed up there, of course. I always felt that that homing uh, aspect of Sonic was kind of cheating. I didn't. I never liked it. I always felt it was a shortcut to make those games work. I don't know. I, see, in the later games, it worked pretty well because it helps create kind of a rhythm. When you say later games, though, how, how much later are you talking now? Like the... I actually think it works fine at Sonic Adventure 2, but also like Sonic Generations and such. Yeah, it's, it's Sonic a, Generations is good, yeah. It just moves in such a different direction, where this is a game that really tries to deliver that 2D experience in a 3D sort of space, and it's really fascinating to see. Like, So, obviously, the lock-on attack was Sonic Team's solution yeah. to how do you handle a fast-moving character moving in a 3D space, and said, so, well, you lock on. And here, it's like they don't really do that at all, but the controls are precise enough and the speed is kept reasonable enough that you always kind of feel like you have enough control to handle what's happening. Yeah, also the camera here is always centered on a sprite, and I really like this. I mean, it does that in Adventure as well, but it's a little bit more finicky. Whereas here, you know, when you run, it zooms out just enough that you have clarity in where you're going. And it seems like you never really have to battle the camera as much as you do in Adventure. Well, no, because you have full control of the camera with the right stick. And that's another difference, I guess. In the Sonic Adventure and the Boost Sonics, they were all about automatically controlling the camera to give the player the best view. And it's it works in theory, but it was it could be tricky. And it ultimately means that the games have to be fairly limited in terms of where you can go. Quite linear in that sense, yeah. So in this cool slime here, you actually... The initial jump, you can drop down into it, but then once you stand on it after that, you just kind of like float it or like move across the surface, which is a fun thing. There's a lot of gimmicks like this in each level, kind of like classic Sonic games. This makes me think, I mean, obviously the resolution here, the frame rate stability uh, wouldn't be the same case, but this kind of feels like a game that's closing that gap during the Saturn times that we didn't get a 3D Sonic on Saturn. It's so. an interesting potential idea for a yeah. game that could work on Saturn. It wouldn't have worked this well, I'm sure, but definitely the idea of it, though, uh, could have showed up on the Saturn. That's true. So here you have to start. Oh, yeah, there the we steam. Go. I love these gimmicks. Yeah, I absolutely love the level design so far in this game. So you do have that sort of propulsion boost, but it doesn't lock on. And right. Again, let me just say, I love these, these liquid effects in this game. They're so cool. And by the way, this is using the software render. The OpenGL render still is slightly buggier. So this is all software based. 
You said they've been working on this for nearly 20 years, or well, over 20 Over years. 20 years at this point. And yeah, so this is nothing new, like for the Sonic community, this has been around, so I'm not bringing any new news here. It's just that I like this so much that I felt I really wanted to just play and talk about it on here, because I really like this latest update and where the game's at now. So what was the latest update? Like at what time? Oh, uh, it happened in July. Oh, that recent. Huh. So there was a patch, basically. You know, nothing major. It's just the game's been... Well, I guess it is kind of, you know, there's some nice fixes here and there, and the game just continues to improve. So many people have worked on it. It's kind of developed under the banner of Sonic Team Jr., which I oh. think is funny. Uh, but so many people have contributed to this project, and, you know, I want to say thank you to all you folks that have worked on it, because I love what this is. This well, you, is so good. You say that you're not saying anything new but i'm a sonic fan but i haven't seen it so i'm i'm sure many people that's, out there are like me yes that's kind of one of the reasons i wanted to talk about it is because i think a lot of people were not familiar with it and the reason i had it out recently actually comes down to uh i had an extron super emotion i should show it here in the video that allows you to basically plug in a vga source and display it oh shoot i knew i was gonna get killed there display it 240p so i could output this to my crt of course you did you know the pvm and play it at at proper low res and it just looks amazing it's a little harder to play at the lower resolution but it really gives you that feeling of what it might have looked like on the sega saturn <laughs> yeah, i guess so it's 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 fun it's good fun so yeah if you hook that up you hook a modern pc hdmi to vga and then bnc cables run rgb signal out and you get a nice 240p output and it's just awesome. I think, though, in this case, the level designs really do need the wider screen to really um, it, it helps shine. Them. I mean, it also helps here. Oh, oh, you overshot that, huh? And that's the fact that you can overshoot that is cool. Because, oh, okay, cool. I have this, these speed shoes here. I wonder if I can... Oh, no, that's not good enough. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I love this, though. The fact that you can just kind of run out of control a little bit is pretty awesome. Because it's something that you can't re- <sighs> You'll get it. It's I'm... something that you couldn't really do in the adventure games. If you went off the path and tried to, you know, get creative with your movement, you usually just fell out of the level. Yeah, it would just fall through the floor, or basically. Glitch out, basically, which is not fun. Yeah, I, I do love the adventure games, especially the soundtracks are my favorite aspect today. But they certainly have their issues. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this also has a nice soundtrack to go with it. It just really feels... It's really an impressive Yeah, effort. we didn't mention the music so far, but I mean, I really, I'm really liking what I'm hearing here. Okay, so let's jump over here. So maybe we should talk a little bit about Sonic in 3D, though, because as I mentioned, I think people think Sonic 3D automatically adventure. Yeah. But, I mean, the idea of Sonic in 3D had been done for many years before this, or attempted to. That's right. You have, like, 3D Blast, which is isometric, which, I mean, I guess you could say 3D, but not really. That's true. Then there's Sonic Mars, which was a 32X uh, planned thing, which I think kind of developed into Extreme, right? Um, the, There was all those different versions of that around, and oh. yeah, there was the Mars one. There was multiple versions of Sonic Extreme in development with different engines. I mean, the, do it was a very one. political. I've, I've talked about it before when I covered uh, somebody's doing Sonic Z Stream. Right. Which, by the way, that engine's now being used to create a first-person shooter. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> which I really love. Based on Sonic, or uh, no? Okay, I was gonna say a first-person shooter starring Sonic sounds. Uh, oh, I guess we got Shadow the Hedgehog. It's close enough. But yeah, it's a Sonic Extreme, and then you also, on Saturn, had those, uh, I, it wasn't a 3D game, but Sonic Jam had those uh, sections. That's right, which is kind Sonic of, World. Which uh, kind of showed you that, there, you know, could be done, but we didn't get the full game like that. So, I mean, Sonic in 3D has always been an idea, I think, for them. That's true. But yeah, so the Sonic Jam stuff, very cool. Let's I, continue here. I guess you could also say that, like, I think it's Sonic 3 that has, like, that 3D model on the title screen. So, oh, yeah, yeah, the 3D rendered Sonic. That's okay. right. So, yeah, Sonic and 3D. Also, the just the original visual designs, even in the 2D games, I think kind of harkens back to, like, that early Silicon Graphics-style 3D. Right. Like, they always considered 3D 
as a medium that was important to the visual identity of Sonic. Yeah, the shading on him and all that stuff, you mean? Exactly. In the environment, there's checkerboard patterns. It was yeah. very early 3D, like the uh, the ball from the Amiga demos. It always reminded <laughs> me of that. Uh-oh. Which wasn't 3D. No, it wasn't. But it looked it. Yeah, it's fooled us all for many years. So yeah, look at... These are such great uh, level designs. I really love what I'm seeing. There we go. Another level down. Man. This is really... This is really one of my favorite fan games, I think. In the, and there's... That's one of the things I love about the Sonic community. I've done some videos on Sage before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always liked when you did that. Maybe I'll do that again soon. Mm. How does Sage work? I mean, I've, I've never looked into it. Explain kind of to me what it is. Well, it's sort of just an online expo, but developers work throughout the year developing Sonic-related fan games and offshoots, and they kind of present them at, the, at this online sort of show and make those game demos available for people to play and there's events around it and all just all kinds of stuff that happens so it's not like a physical convention no 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 no, no. It, you know being online is kind of what makes it's it's a part of the community right so it would be perfect for today as as we're recording this i mean digital events is the, all we can do right that's now the new <laughs> the new hotness thanks to everything going on in the world there we go he's down yeah, I, I really like what they did to these uh, boss battles, making the Robotnik battles like the classic ones, but taking 3D into account. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So let's see what the next level is. It's the deep sea zone. Oh, no. It's, it's like... Look at that water. I just love that effect. Not a big fan of water stages in Sonic, though. Should I be worried? No. Okay. See, man, these slopes. That's, that's a special that... thing. They got spinning rings and they got slopes. Yeah. So I noticed that you can also skip on the water a bit. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting mechanic. Huh. These sprites, though, they look... They look official. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell this apart from an official game. The art's great. I agree. This level, I love the texture design in this level. Oh. oh. So close. Plus transparent water as well. Like, all these features added to this iteration of this engine i just love it do you think though like so we had sonic mania and yeah. things like that so that comes from a fan community uh, originally yeah i see what you're getting at right do you I'm think not... something like this could eventually be turned into an official game it should it should be but it probably won't and you know i, I actually don't know what the creators envision for it what they would like and there's so many people involved it's hard to say what would even really be possible but man is it is it cool and it really deserves that. Oh. Kind of, but it's it's freely available as is, so. You need some. Uh -oh. oh, we got an air bubble there. Oh. You didn't get it? Oh, Tails didn't get it. Oh. So well, that's Tails. okay. We always sacrifice Tails for our, for our means. There you go. There's an extra life up here. Yeah, fan games in Sega, though. There's another one we should mention uh, Street to Rage Remake. Oh, yeah. That was the best Street to Rage for a long time, until right. very recently. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be curious to go back and try that with you, though. Street we can check that out sometime. Yeah, yeah. I agree. What are some other fan uh, games you like, though? Is there any fan games outside of the Sonic or Sega realm that you like? Oh, I loved that that Mario game from Sage 2018 that had been around for a while. I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh, man. that's so, It's so cool. So this, so you said Sage. So obviously, they make non-Sonic games there, too. Yep, that's right. Huh. I would like to check that out too, yeah. That would be Absolutely. Cool to see. But that's not 3D though, that's 2D then? Or... Yeah, that's 2D. Huh. Oh man, let's see. Wow. Just... It even has the sliding mechanics from uh, the 2D Sonic games here. I love that. I love these sections, the uh, spring sections that fly high into the air. And you need to be precise with them. That's another. I love that. Like it's, It can be tricky, but you have to hit it. You can't, you can't just rely on, like, automatic... Uh, nothing's automatic about this. <laughs> I know, that was close. So, how often have you played this game? Just give me an idea of, like, how difficult this game is. Because you're controlling it pretty well, but... Have you played it a lot, or is uh, it... Yeah, I've played it okay. off and on. Off and on through the years, though. It has... Uh, I kind of, like, 
forgot about it for a while because it's you know and then i just on a whim i saw the recent update and i thought you know what i should load this up again and i fell in love all over so someone like coming into this game from a 2d sonic perspective how would they take to these controls Shoot. you think well i think it just it carries some of the concepts of sonic really well but fundamentally it plays so differently that mm. it's it's more it has to do with how you handle um modern dual stick controls or mouse and keyboard i see well most people can kind of handle that today i think yeah exactly do you know how many levels or zones there's done? six wow, okay and maybe seven with an incomplete one still i need to check on where they're at with that actually here we go so oh. it was ah oh. well you didn't fall too far away so you said this was recently updated do you know kind of what the scope is for finishing the game or is it finished now like what's the uh current status i don't know <laughs> <laughs> asking the hard questions here yeah. this is a really cool puzzle though the whole uh, even though it's driving you mad no it's it's just i'm failing at it that's okay that's the thing is and this is something uh a lot of modern games seem to be afraid of not all not all obviously but letting the player fail is a valuable thing right like i know exactly what oh that was bad timing i know exactly what i have to do here it's just a matter of execution and actually you know learning that and getting that down it's satisfying i don't mind the failure that, that's part of the experience this wouldn't be memorable here if I didn't fail there a couple of times. Now now that, that part will stick out somewhat. Yeah, yeah, it's teaching you a lesson and you're getting better as you try more and more. It's clever level design. And I keep making the mistake with these guys. The crabs? Cause, yeah, because in regular 2D Sonic, it's a little easier to... Yeah. See, this, this game doesn't joke around with this stuff. So, oh, we got an air bubble there, luckily. This is still giving me anxiety, just like 3D Sonic, so... Job well done. There we go. Just look at how much more interactive and fun these underwater stages are, comp like, comparatively to the 2D Sonics, though. Because the underwater stages in Sonic 1 and 2, I never found them enjoyable, but here, it's kind of making more out of it being 3D. Yeah, 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 for sure. And again, it's just crazy to consider what they've achieved here using this engine. And obviously, again, it's doing a lot more uh, than <laughs> what the Doom engine initially could offer. Well, it only took 20 years. But it only took 20 years. <laughs> so let's Oh, you got this. like a water slide here, which is also in classic Sonic. That's right, absolutely. This is just... It's so fun for me to see how much fans today grasp these classic game designs and do it just as well, or sometimes even better, than official developers. Yeah. And this is definitely a, a case for that, because I have never seen a 3D Sonic this, this this well done. I've seen some demos that you showed me over the years of other ones, uh, which have also looked interesting, but this one is beyond any of those. Getting some air here. Making sure. Okay, there we go. We're all good. Now, climb up here. And somehow this brings back like that old school 3D design as well. Like the the fun of playing like Tomb Raider, weirdly enough. Right. Yeah. Like exploring these areas and moving through this 3D space. It's really engaging. I think it has something to do with the fact that. The focus is, oh no, the focus is always on the game character and the action, whereas today there's so much spectacle around everything. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I think even the new Tomb Raiders, which I like the old ones, but the new ones I find it a little bit too busy, uh, a little bit too cinematic maybe for my taste compared to what I was used to. I know to. what you mean, yeah. yeah. And even Sonic today, I think, is a bit too cinematic for its own good. So it's good to see this. This is kind of like Sonic Mania in 3D in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this is definitely a game. This is a game design that probably could have existed back then, but it wouldn't have worked well on Saturn with this camera system, this, I don't this think movement so. system in general. Like they could have done, I guess, 
They no, could have done the no. analog controller, but it wouldn't have been this good no. without two sticks. No, exactly. It needed the dual stick familiarity to work as well as it does, or mouse and keyboard. Uh, so obviously that's tricky. I think the idea, though, it could have shown up in a lesser form, and uh, it could have grown into this officially. Oh, good, good job. Yeah, just the amount of puzzles and, like, variety in these stages, it's really cool. Like, they, they really did a good job of nailing the Sonic feel in these stages. For sure. It would have been so easy to just create... Uh-oh. Oh, did you... I... Oh, you died. I got crushed by the wall. It would have been so easy, though, to just kind of go into the gimmick of speed and do long corridors and have him go fast. Oh, yeah. And do that thing, because that's what people usually associate with Sonic, but I've always been more of a platformer guy when it comes to my Sonics. So I like uh, Sonic CD. Oh yeah, me too. There we go. But uh, when we talk Sonic CD though, Japanese soundtrack or US soundtrack, John? Definitely Japanese soundtrack. That's right. Oh well, yeah, what's what's the trick here? I can't remember. Well, we got some ear. Oh, maybe it's actually a spin puzzle. You got it. You just looked at that and got it, right? Or yeah. did you know that? <laughs> no, I... Let's see here. There we go. Bounce up here. Watch oh. out for Mr. Mr. Krabs. Krabs. Oops. No one likes a visit from Mr. Krabs. And I actually used to, sort of that sonic momentum there. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Like a little bit of a half pipe here. These huge jumps are so fun. <laughs> I'm noticing also that the game does have alternative routes. It does? Because I, I see right. sometimes that you go past other routes, so it has like an upper path and lower there's, path. There's like lots of secrets and hidden features and all kinds of stuff in this game. It's absolutely packed. That is pretty cool though, because that was another classic Sonic thing, was the alternative paths. Oh! oh that's spikes on a wall. Here nice, we go. Nice one. Whew. And look go. at those sprites for the uh, foliage there. Whoa, that was quite a jump. There we go. This is so fascinating to me. Now we're off to fight, face the boss. You haven't seen much in the way of 3D models in terms of, like, objects. So I, much, think, other than the I think that's an option in this. You oh. can actually... I don't remember if it's stock. I just prefer to play it this way. Hmm. So while you do this boss battle, how do you feel about Sonic Heroes? Because I always like that. Uh, oh yeah, people don't don't look fondly on that game, but I've always had a soft spot for it. Yeah, yeah. Good music. Good music. Yeah, they well, even the worst Sonic games had good music. That's true. Sonic 2006, anyone? We still owe the fans a live stream of that. One day. It will happen one day. He's doing the shredder thing where he's like three different ones and you have to find the real one, right? There he goes. There you go, yeah. I love how they still managed to get the animal container here. Yep. Look at that. Got the little flickies there. I don't see Flicky actually. Fish. He's in there. Oh, cool. That's right. I'm playing this actually on a gaming laptop now for ease of capture. Mm. So we can use my main PC for RTX voice. Yes, I need that because I do not speak loudly as the YouTube also, comments well, very often. It's also very, very hot right now, so... Oh yeah, this stage is cool with the atmosphere. This is, yeah, this is this is unlike any Sonic stage so far, huh? That's right. Oh, that's right. The uh, and there's that slime stuff. Oh, cool. So you have more like gimmicks on the. Uh, I like these different elements. Kind of. This looks almost like a Castlevania stage. Looks like Robotnik Castle or something. <laughs> In actuality. So. Oh, that's a cool enemy design. The knight there? Yeah. Pretty cool. There we go. Oh, cool. So it has this swing. Look at that. We got these 3D sort of barriers, a lot like classic Sonic games. Whoa! whoa. 
I don't feel like you're losing the sense of control as much in this game as the adventure games either. I mean, oh, it feels it's very easy to control. It feels very natural. Yeah. Oh, look at this. It has like this. It's These weird. challenges probably wouldn't work well within the adventure style no. control scheme. The physics on the adventure also, I don't think, would work with this. No, I tend to agree with you. There we go. Yeah, this is this is a really cool stage, really nice sort of atmosphere, and also really unique. Uh oh, Oops. in the slime again. But this is an alternate path, right? You didn't go back necessarily, or let's see. You gotta go up. Nice one. No, no. no. Nice one. Still saved. <laughs> Does this have multiplayer of any kind? Oh, uh, yeah, there is some multiplayer stuff. That I haven't actually spent too much time with. Right. Oh. But, yeah, I think, you know, we've seen a good amount of the game at this point. Yeah, this is so fascinating. I'm really happy you showed this to me. But, uh, yeah, this is... If you guys have not played this yet, uh, despite my failings there, <laughs> I do recommend checking it out. It is a ton of fun. It's one of the greatest fan games ever made, by far. And yeah, there's also a, a kart racer based on this, which maybe we'll talk about another time, because that's really cool as well. Yeah, if there's any fan games you guys would like to see also in the comments, let us know. Yeah, for sure. But that's going to do it for this video. So, you know, like, subscribe, all that business. And until next time, stay retro.